Like that's why I'm sad because because I was so engaged in learning a new language. Go play a game, and you will probably solve some of the problems that you have. Player in life, which means you are alive and you can still play. With Lego pieces, I can do whatever I want. Three main steps, Andres. The first one is understand your user. Not only you have individual objectives, you can have traitors, you can have uh, like many uh, outcomes. Welcome to the Prototype Podcast. Um, we dive deep into the minds of some of the most creative people in product management and design. And at Productize, we're all about exploring new ideas and creating amazing products, including games and gamification. So join us at 2024 Productize Conference in Lisbon from October 2nd to the 4th to learn, network, and have fun. Grab tickets if they are still available when this goes live at www.productize.co. So today we're experiencing um, a different format because we have two guests with us, we're joining two fantastic guests together, and both of whom will be leading a workshop at the Productize conference. Um, I'm very honored to welcome Renato Carbone, is a loyalty strategist and data scientist specializing in gamification and He's known for his strategic thinking and expertise in designing innovative algorithms and data tools, making him a master at engaging users and driving results through data-driven strategies. Along with Tiago Baggio Nuevo, is a gamification expert. He's also the founder of Kubo Experience, and he has a creative approach and a strong background in game design, and uh, it has been working with corporates and startups, startups alike. Tiago has developed over 50 games and gamified solutions that have transformed learning and engagement for teams in more than 200 companies across Europe and Latin America. Together, Tiago and Renato will be facilitating a workshop, which is called Engaging Users with Gamification. And they will share their exper expertise, their experience, also their insights on using gamification to enhance user experience and product engagement. And I'm thrilled to have them, both of them, here on the show. Thank you so much for you guys joining. We have met other uh, on different uh, venues, but here we are finally having this together. Thank nice you, to be here. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for, for being with us. So before we dive in, let's start with a game, <laughs> which we do with other guests as well, um, which is a rather silly game, but I, I actually think people always have a very surprising answers to it. So maybe starting with uh, Renato, what's your favorite app right now on your phone, Renato? Right now, uh, my favorite app is Meetup. Uh, since moving to Lisbon, I'm looking for places to meet people, talk about work and, and also about living in Lisbon. So Meetup has been a good friend of mine, finding new places. I met you through basically some, some scenarios like Meetup. And they mm -hmm. have a lot of gamification techniques that are not that uh, apparent to everyone. And today we will probably discuss some of those features. All right. So what about you, Tiago? Okay, I use a lot Miro uh, and Notion, basically because I'm always having ideas, so I need to put it uh, somewhere. And mm -hmm. Miro is something that I use a lot. Uh, I think it's even for even in your phone collaboration. Uh, mostly Notion in the phone, uh, but right. Miro mostly for uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but when when I have some ideas, I add into one or the other. Uh, when I'm mm -hmm. reading a book or, or listening to a podcast, I use Notion, for instance, and I I add that there. Uh, we learned it together in uh, in the Stranger Connections. Uh, that's true. Uh, uh, with event. So uh, that's, that's Marta, what I with Marta, right? Marta with Oliveira. Marta. That's right. From yes. Coffee Dish. Yes. She's also going to be a fellow speaker at Productize, by the way. She's nice. on the, the lineup for the main day. All right. Crazy connections, right? This, you yeah. know, connections that were actually unexpected. So, Renato, what's your favorite way to relax after a busy day? Currently, uh, staying with my son and wife. I have a nine-month-old oh. son, so 
It's like every five minutes I have, I need to go get a, a quick hug. Thiago has some 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 theories about what I'm doing, <laughs> but that's my that's my thing, hugging my son. So nice. What about you, Thiago? For me, it's, it has always been games, and and my my wife and my my kid, my my daughter, they also love games. So we play mm -hmm. board games and video games all the time. Uh, when I was eight years old, I traded my pacifier uh, with a master system, and since mm -hmm. then, for me, what keeps me in peace are games. So I love I love playing video games all the time. Yeah, I remember those. Uh, I never had a, a master system myself. I was more of a Nintendo guy, but um, okay. yeah, I heard I heard it was quite popular in, in Brazil. Yes, along it with was. Uh, it was. Neo Mega Drive, Neo, Mega Mega Drive, Drive Neo, Neo Geo. Exactly. If the, if you were a rich kid, which yeah. I was not. <laughs> True. Um, yeah, those were the days. Okay. Yeah, amazing days, by the way. I mean, I think if you were born like in the eighties or or so. Um, you didn't have that much uh, screen time like nowadays. Kids, True. obviously, they are exposed to a lot of screen time. Um, and in many ways, the, 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 the screen time that you had, at least with computers, was a better, higher quality screen time because it was not as abundant. So, you know, it, it was maybe one or two hours per week, which was when you, had, you, you would, could, could grab the computer of your aunt or your uncle or some family person that had a, a real PC or you, sometimes even a video game console, right? Because, you know, if unless you, you were lucky to have one, it was always like this kid, this kid in the neighborhood, like, oh, this guy has a Mega Drive. Let's go to his place and play the entire afternoon sure. there, right? And um, I think rent because of games. that, yeah, rent some games, exactly. Uh, there was a, a more valuable quality time with gaming and, and the way that people we're playing was also uh, a little bit more social but anyways we'll, we'll we'll be exploring all of that in this conversation so tiago can you start by explaining what gamification is and why it's becoming increasingly important in in product and also for lots of companies that are are looking at gamification as a way to better engage with users i can i can give you uh a technical answer, and I'll let Renato give you a more fun one. So, okay, uh, so let's go for the technical one then. <laughs> yeah, and then basically, let's go to the TLDR answer here. <laughs> yeah. about okay, basically, gamification is when you use game elements uh, such as points, rewards, challenges, and storytelling into non-game contests. But that's too too technical. I think Renato has something much much better than this. So. Yeah, maybe maybe this what Thiago said is the practical thing. What we see at yeah. the end and say, okay, now I see that I'm earning points for do that. So gamification is a design focus on human motivation. And I'm going now to give some elements that will make this very clear for you and everyone. But first, it's our time to ask you, Andre, are you a gamer? Well... I like games and I play games. Um, I, I actually, I'm I'm not playing as much as I think I I should. Actually, <laughs> I'm so I'm not a, a super heavy gamer at this moment. Okay, no. so, but you but think uh, but I you... am and I, I do play and I mostly Great. video games. So and, yeah. you consider yourself a game a gamer and that's yeah. good because there are 3.5 billion gamers in the world. I'm just asking that because we are going to just do a quick path between games and gamification mm -hmm. so that everyone can understand. So you consider yourself a gamer, but give me one personal example of yours about uh, a hobby that you have, any hobby that you like to do. Uh, a hobby? Uh, so yeah, I do uh, open water swimming. So every Excellent. Sunday morning I, I do that, yeah. Excellent. So open water swimming. Do you consider open water swimming a game? Um, no, no, I don't. I don't consider it a game. I don't, I don't think it, it, I can gamify it a little bit because I use Strava on my phone. Perfect. And uh, Perfect. Strava, you know, so it gamifies the experience that's, a little bit. That's, that's exactly what we are going to explain here. So open water swimming is, was this at the Olympic games? Yeah, it was actually. So it, the name was Olympic games. So maybe we can start saying that 
open swimming <laughs> is a game. And why we can do that? Because what is a game? A game, it doesn't matter a video game or, or open swimming, is a voluntary action to solve an unnecessary problem. Okay, when you think that swimming at open waters is good for you, you want to do that for whatever reason, you are engaging in a game because you, do, you don't need to do that. You do it because you like it. It's the same as video games. Why do we uh, spend time playing that? Because it gives us entertainment. It gives us any other qualities. But mm -hmm. games are voluntary actions to solve unnecessary problems. And the path from game to gamification is exactly what you perfectly explained. Uh, is using Strava or is making it an Olympic game, is adding elements to enhance human motivation. So we are now trying to compete to see if you can do this for longer periods, if you can do this on different conditions, if you can do this faster. All mm -hmm. those additional triggers to enhance your motivation to do open water swim swimming is gamification. And that could be done by adding points, by adding global rankings, by competing with friends. This is gamification. Mm -hmm. So why do you think that um, this is becoming increasingly important for, for product development? Because I guess that's what, how you guys are making a living, how you are consulting yeah. with lots of companies. Why do you think that companies are becoming more and more aware about gamification and using gamification to create better, more engaging products. It's essentially, I'll, I'll take this lead on this one and then Thiago could take on the next question, but just yeah. essentially because all companies, all product developers are looking for ways to make their audience engage, naturally yeah. engage, engage more, use their app, more than other apps. So the gamification triggers, the gamification designs are the techniques that they use to make you prefer their app instead of their, their competitors. So that's why this is the key uh, technique and the key approach that we need to make our app stand out. That, that's it, I think even uh, it boosts user engagement usually. So gamification is, own product designs for that. Uh, it creates a sense of progress. It, it creates a sense of achievement and fun because sometimes when you use an app, it's not fun to use the app. You use it because you need it, but you can make it fun by adding gamification elements, game elements. So if you reward it, if you challenge, so uh, like if you if you think about Duolingo, for instance, it shows how mm -hmm. gamification can really drive uh, engagement uh, and make you use it. If you If you lose one day, then you lose your boost, and 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 then you have to go back there that day, unless you don't want you lose you don't want to lose that boost. So uh, mm -hmm. it makes you you challenged, I think, and, and mm -hmm. usually increases engagement. Yeah, I mean, there's the uh, criticism that you can make to this kind of gamification techniques that are that they are a little bit sterile or childlike. I mean. Going back to the example of Duolingo, right? You, oh, you lost the boost, so what, right? It's like my life is not going to change because I lost my boost or because I lost my day. Or I, I understand that hooks people and some people are very, wow, I cannot really lose my day because otherwise I lose my, my boost or I lose my record or whatever. And I also have kids and, you know, some of my kids are very, very... Um, addicted to some of these platforms to the point that when they go on holidays, they ask me, hey, dad, can you just log into this game so I don't lose, you know, this specific <laughs> <Yeah>. item <laughs> or whatever it is? Uh, and I tell them, guys, no, <laughs> I, I will not do that because <laughs> you have to, to know, you have to learn how to decouple from the, the gamified experience. Otherwise, it also becomes somehow um, an addiction. And you know, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm being a little bit this counter narrative quite early in this conversation just to understand your um, perspective on this, which is also the downside of either uh, very simplified gamifications 
or gamifications that might lead to uh, experiences that are not, at least in the long term, on the best interest of the, the user, if you, you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, in, in this case, Andre, like, and we will probably discuss this more, uh, but mm -hmm. uh, there's this bias that in order for me to gamify it, it needs to look like a game. And it's not true. We just discussed Strava. The Duolingo example that you gave, uh, that Thiago gave and you discussed, like I had, I had a, a personal friend of mine, very like huge friend. He was robbed recently in Brazil. Mm -hmm. You have that. And he posted mm -hmm. on Instagram, I was robbed. It was terrible experience, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, please don't answer any of my messages. And the right. second post that he made was, unfortunately, I lost my 250 whatever streak on Duolingo. Like, <laughs> that's why I'm sad. Because, because I was so engaged in learning a new language. Mm -hmm. I just lost a lot of money and experience a traumatic event right. but what i have to say to people is i lost my my 250 streak and there's no way to, right to but get that, that that's a secondary aspect of what you're learning right because if you are learning yeah. a language you don't care about the streak you care about the fact that uh, maybe now you know french that you didn't know um three months ago when you started the experience of the, the gamification but most, most right, but, users but, uh, you can go chug sorry no go on yeah, what I was saying is that I, I understand what you're saying and I, I kind of feel the same, but people are not all the same. And some people really see that as something that they that engages them. So Absolutely. Uh, when, Absolutely. when we talk about gamification, there is one, one Barto test they call. It's a test when you, you understand uh, which kind of player you are. So there are players that are more uh, competitive, so they want to compete mm -hmm. with someone, so uh, they don't play uh, if they are not competing. For them, it's mm -hmm. not uh, fun. Others yeah. are, are playing games because they want to socialize. And there are others that they need to conquer and to have, uh, they, they, they need to have uh, 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 something like badges and, and trophies. So are different kinds of, of people with, mm. with different, uh, I would say, drives of motivation. And exactly. I understand for me, Duolingo never worked. And I think, okay, Duolingo is not, not, not that good in gamification, but it is for those kind of people. So Absolutely. It depends on the gamer that uh, we're talking about. Okay, so let, let's go into uh, designing gamification strategies. And I understand that to do that, you also need to take into consideration what kind of gamer you have in front of front of you. So what are yeah. the, the key steps involved in designing an effective gamification strategy? If you can, if you can boil it down to a bunch of steps, what is your go to framework um, to to kind of design a gamification uh, strategy for, you know, for an app, for an experience, whatever you, you feel like it. Uh, I'll start and I'll leave this to Chago. So three main steps, Andre. The first one is understand your user who mm -hmm. have a clear view on your target audience because of the examples that we gave here. The second one is try to understand their, those users' motivators. Why am I I'm doing this? Why will I, I learn a new language? Why will I do open water swimming? Understand mm -hmm. the motivators and then design behind uh, design the motivational triggers to make you do more. For this third step, and this is all related to our workshop, we both use the same method that's called the Octalysis framework. Right. That is, uh, they have their eight core drives that help you understand how to tackle those motivators. I'll, I'll give Thiago to talk a bit more about the Octalysis on this. No. So yeah. the, the, the Octalysis the, the, uh, framework from Yukai Chu. Yukai exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's, we are that's both, this one. <laughs> exactly. We are both brand lovers of this uh, technique <laughs> and we've had great results using that. One thing that I, I would add there is... Uh, Define also the objectives you want to achieve through gamification because you understand the, the people, you understand uh, what what are their motivators, but you need to understand what what you want as a product designer 
to obtain with the gamification. So what are your objectives? That must be clear as well. Uh, and then uh, if it, you, you can define it's increased, increased engagement or increased retention in your app or learning outcomes, whatever, you need to make that uh, clear so that you know which problem you're solving with gamification. So if you don't define the problem well, you won't uh, know which problem you're solving. So I think this is one key element as well on, the, mm -hmm. on this strategy. So, all right. So we're going to use the Octalysis uh, framework to do that. Um, what are some of the common uh, pitfalls you've seen in this specific gamification framework and how can um, product people um, avoid them, so to say? The most important one is this, the, that definition that says adding game elements to a known game context. That one already drives us to a mindset that it needs to look like a video game. It needs to look like it's fun. It needs to look very colorful, very cartoonish. That's not true. That mm -hmm. can be used depending on your audience, and that would increase enhance results. But if you, if you just understand that and are trying to make it look like a game, you will lose half of your audience because they don't want that ludic thing that that doesn't connect with their context so this is for me is the biggest problem or issue that sometimes take those designs to the trash bin i can add uh, yes i think one one common mistake is uh people over rely in extrinsic rewards for instance like points and badges and mm -hmm. and they don't consider that those psychological motivations from the users so this can lead to some short-term uh, spike in engagement and then fails to build a long-term uh, loyalty. I think you need to really have much more than point bets and, 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 and uh, leaderboards, which is also uh, the name of the book of Thales. It, it, it reads, okay, beyond points, bets, and leaderboards, because that's mm -hmm. too basic for uh, driving real, real results. So what is there? beyond points, badges, and letter boards. What can you implement instead? Or so essentially, you, you will focus on their um, intrinsic motivators and you will you use those core drives. For example, an epic meaning. You could, you could uh, wrap your narrative in something that could be linked to a higher purpose. For instance, Wikipedia, mm -hmm. uh, we are, everyone is available to create the biggest database of the world. On Wikipedia, we do it for free. We create mm -hmm. articles, we review articles because we are trying to have the world's database available for free for everyone. This is a gamification technique that created the thing that disrupted or destroyed all, all the encyclopedias, all that came beyond that. And that empowered Google to have everything for them to search and things like that. Yeah. So uh, you, we are looking for human motivators to make them engage. I used one like Epic Meaning. There are eight car drivers, for example. And then we wrap our solution between one or in reality, a lot of those uh, core drives at the same time to connect with multiple audiences. Mm -hmm. So in terms of these intrinsic motivators that uh, you were talking about, what are the um, typical intrinsic motivators that you have found in, in users? You know, what, what is driving people to actually play and keep playing the game? Is there, uh, th there are. Uh, I'll start with like um, show that they have that ability show that they they are becoming better when they do that. So mm. you have the Strava app and that helps you to see that you are improving. Uh, if you if you if you play music, you want to play music to the friends and see that you are progressing yeah. while you do that. That's a very social motivator. You want to show exactly. your friends, exactly. you want to show the community whatever exactly. you are, right? And you do it for friends but you do it for yourself as well. You want mm. to, uh, that's, that's one of the key. You want to thing. become a better version of yourself. Exactly. That's one of the key things that we learn from games that it is a game 
since it's a voluntary action, it's mm -hmm. like a repeatable action that you can repeat until you succeed. So when a game pops up for you, you failed, game over or whatever, it's a taunt saying, oh, I, I lost. No, I can try again. So games give you that ability to try again until you succeed, until you learn, until you progress. Uh, and those those triggers are the things that we need to try through our uh, gamified designs to make users do it more. Yeah. And I can, I can also tell, for me, for instance, the kind of player that I am, I like mm -hmm. uh, when we talk about these, you, you have social influence, as, as Renato was saying, but there is another one with which I think it's, uh, for me, for, for my kind of, of, of player is uh, good, which is the empowerment of creativity and feedback. It's when when you engage, uh, when users are, are engaged in a creative process uh, mm -hmm. and they have to, to figure out things and try different combinations and they, they, it's not only one final answer, one right answer. They can try many ways to solve that problem. So when we empower this creativity is also something that is an intrinsic motivation for people who likes to be creative and mm -hmm. who wants to find their own results different from others. So a lot of games you see today, uh, basically they don't have, it's not like the, the old games, which was a platform game that you have only one way to find the, 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 the end of, of the game. You have several different decisions that you can take uh, that, you can, that you can make, and then basically you can uh, get to f different endings. And when you have that empowerment of creativity, that is uh, something that it, it is an intrinsic motivation for, for m many players. Yeah, which is more akin to life itself, right? Because it's yeah. uh, what we call infinite, infinite uh, games, or uh, you know, <clears throat> yeah, uh, infinite games, right? I mean, chess. Is a good example of a finite game. I mean, you have an end state, which is your king has been captured, or you have catch, captured the, the other's uh, king, or maybe it's a draw, but that's that's it, right? Um, while infinite games like life, I mean, they don't stop, right? I mean, as long as you are a player in life, which means you are alive and you can still play, you can still play, and um, and. And that kind of infinite game uh, is is definitely something that um, we do see in in especially in video games. I, I'm not so uh, aware of board games. Is this something board games are also incorporating in um, more recent uh, board games? This kind of you know latitude and all uh, expanse uh, expansive oh. universe. I won't say uh, there's a lot, but there are some RPG games which you can build uh, stories and use uh, the elements. But for instance, there is one which is right behind me here that's called Dead mm -hmm. of Winter. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it's a game where you have a colony and you have to survive a zombie apocalypse, basically. And you, mm -hmm. have, uh, you have several different characters and you can play from two to, to three, four, I think even six people. That's the most, uh, eight people, I think it is. But every time you play, it's a different game because you have different objectives from each of the per of the people. You have a lot of different objectives. You have a, a collective objective from the colony. You have uh, individual objectives. You can have traitors. You can have uh, like many uh, outcomes. So it is a game that you can play many times, and it will be different every time. Again, yeah. there is an end. It's but there is an end game. state. There is. Yeah, a, there, there is, is an, an end state. Game. There is an end state. Yeah. But, but uh, it, the point is, it's, it's really replayable. Uh, and and for, for me, that's something that needs to, to be there uh, in, in a game. You have to be able to replay it without uh, getting to be too repetitive, you know. Yeah. Hmm. I believe the, the, uh, the best answer here regarding uh, end state or not would be Lego, right? Uh, with Lego pieces, I can do whatever I want. And I can put five pieces together and say, that's a dog. And Thiago would use 15 pieces to say, that's a dog. And they are they could be also true answers. Mm -hmm. So the, the, what there is, there is games, although there's an end state, we created the end state. We wanted to do a dog with Lego pieces. The, 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 the most thing that we should look for is... Are we having Lego pieces, small pieces that I can do whatever I want with that? Or, are, or am I getting like walls? Because with walls, the only thing I can do 
is put four together and a roof. But with Lego pieces, I can do any format I, I want. So uh, this this could be, should be the, the biggest thing we would look for uh, with deciding if the end state is the problem or the ability to make it different every time I do it. Mm -hmm. All right. So can you tell us, uh, uh, a little bit about some of the highlights of the workshop that you're going to to be facilitating at Productize Conference 2024, uh, engaging users with gamification. What can people expect? So let's say I'm a product manager. I don't really know much about gamification. Of course, has you know the average product manager I've heard about it, and maybe I've I've read a couple of things about it, but. Uh, I'm still maybe stuck in a company where gamification hasn't been a top priority. Um, and yeah, I mean, maybe my product is, like you said, is is doing what it should, but there's no real gamification element to it. What can people expect when they get out of this workshop um, to have learned and um, to to look at gamification uh, with new eyes, if, if if you understand what what I'm saying, we will do a quick start, an icebreaker, to remove that bias that uh, gamification is a thing that I'm not tapping at the moment. Mm -hmm. They are probably mm -hmm. doing it, but unintentionally. So we are going to do the same wrap up that we did here, of course, with more substance to show them that gamification is not an out of this world technique. It's part of our day to day things that we do and use. Uh, the only thing is how can they understand and intentionally start adopting it? This is the start. And then Thiago will, will, will take us on a huge journey here. So tell yeah. us, man. Yeah, we will, we will play one of our games that we developed in Kubo in Basically, it's a, a zombie apocalypse game, uh, and, and people will be different in different groups. They have to negotiate. They have to be challenged. They have to come up with uh, with uh, strategies to solve their problems, their unnecessary problems, right, uh, Renato? And the idea is that they uh, they play the game, and after that, we will tell them how we used the framework to create that game and how they can mm -hmm. then project that into their product uh, now they, that they have. So the idea is that they, they understand how we created a game using the framework and how they can use that same framework to design game elements that can be applied on their own products or services. So it's a zombie apocalypse game. Yeah. <laughs> that you guys have designed in, inside. Google. Yes, yes. That's, that's one that we have designed uh, for corporate trainings. And then there's a lot of skills that you can use on, on, on the game. Uh, but basically, it, it is uh, all about negotiation, communication, and leadership. That's it. All right. So how many people are supposed to play the game together? Five people, six people, the same? Uh, it's it's going to be, uh, okay, it's a, it's a, it's a ten, 10 group game. They are playing all together. So they need mm -hmm. to interact all of them. So if oh, so we have a full house. Groups will be interacting with each other. Yes, yes. So everybody oh, wow. will be playing together. So it's going to be a third. Uh, if, if we have 30 people, there will be 10 groups of three people. Uh, and then they will have to, to work on their way on, on solving their objectives and, and accomplishing their objectives in, in time. There will be a limited time for that. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. So we now, without revealing too much about it, um, for those planning to attend, how can they prepare to get the most out of this gamification workshop? I think that, uh, to be honest, open-minded, but mm -hmm. also bring their 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 current challenge because we will do the game that has team building that will open their minds on like yeah. I understood that this was a game, but I was interacting with people. I had to solve challenges. There was time. There was a lot of limitations that I had to account for. Uh, and when they achieved that end game, that should be a win state, but could be a big failure because they 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 saw, they learned with their mistakes as well. Then we want to give them the framework, explain how the framework use it, uh, works. 
and they will have th those groups will need to design a product and add those elements that they learn and we will be facilitating for each group and giving them more hints so ideally they would use their 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 influence they will influence the others to do the project about their own problem and get the other minds to cooperate and help them design or solve what they are what they are struggling at the moment with gamification okay all right so um open mindedness i think it's super important um because one of the things that uh, i guess most people can relate to is that when you are a kid playing a game is an opener of course you are always up for playing a game right you are um you are super open minded about playing a game it's you know it's something you do naturally with effort e without any effort right effortlessly but if you are you know an adult uh, the percentage of adults that actually keep playing games especially board games i guess it's you know it 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 reduces people i i was i was um i think i was on twitter the other day and someone actually posted something like oh you know i just bought a new house or i rented a new house and i have to i i gave all my games board games uh, away i gave my my board games to my i don't know my my family or something and now i regret it so much because i i want to <laughs> keep playing some of those <laughs> games but i don't have the games anymore because i gave them away because i thought you know i'm a fucking adult why should i keep playing games um <laughs> Uh, but this does happen, right? Um, we become uh, close-minded regarding some of these games. We might think, oh, you know, just a fucking stupid game. Why should I care about playing this, right? Um, so wh what's your response to this? What, what, what is the benefit, uh, the tangible benefit of keeping, uh, you know, playing games? I guess, Tiago, you know, you have hundreds of games in your shelves, what other i i don't know what what's like the the biggest benefits that you see people having uh for continuously playing games in uh, as they go in adulthood and here i maybe not necessarily video games because i think that's an entirely different kind of conversation but more specifically board games uh like the ones that you also design at kubo okay uh, for me uh, one thing that's important i think everybody should understand that uh when you are solving a problem uh, in, a, in a way that nobody solved before, you are being creative. So, all of, for me, when you play games, you are you are practicing creativity. You are practicing solving problems in a different way, in a new in a new way. And uh, everybody has problems, and everybody has to be creative. So, I have uh, one of, of the workshops that we give in in Kubo is uh, is called Life is a Game, and it's about creativity to solving problems. So, apply it to problem solving. And one thing that I say is that you people have to uh, think like a child and and uh, be back to to when they didn't know the answer and they had to find out a new way of solving the, the problem. Because when you do that, you are uh, practicing creativity and it's going to increase your uh, problem solving skills uh, during your work, during your, your routine. So basically games is that you can you can always uh, use the games to practice creativity to be back uh, as a child again and think like a child and think like you don't know the answer and if you don't know the answer you have to create a new one and that's when you you use your imagination and using imagination to solve problems it's creativity so uh, I, that that's for me and and what I tell everybody go play a game and uh, you will probably solve some of the problems that you have uh, not only because of the game or because you learn something in the game but because you are not thinking about the problem and sometimes we think too much about about the problem and what we need is to step out of the problem a little bit and let our mind clear uh, and for and, and the games do that the games uh, have the ability to make you be present in the game not thinking about all the problems that you have and once mm -hmm. you do that your brain is working uh, in the behinds, you know, they're working there in the background. And then some, sometime you say, okay, now I have an idea for that. And uh, you're not thinking about that, but your, your brain was. So mm -hmm. uh, 
I think that's, so, that's a really huge benefit. Creativity um, and also um, thera thera therapeutic effects has a, a yeah. way to you know relax and has a way to in, in this sense andre I, mm -hmm. i was at one of Thiago's workshop about creativity and he said mm -hmm. something that to me was like very powerful he was saying when we go to a business meeting and we before we start the meeting we are doing some small jokes we are waiting for someone we are we are relaxed and then someone arrives and say okay st stop the joke close the door, we need to fix this problem right now. So then right. we, we can't connect with who we are. We can't, we don't Stop give room playing. to creativity. Stop playing <laughs> and it. let's fix exactly. the work. So then we <laughs> are it. removing all the chance that we have on being creative. So hopefully me and Tiago are starting this movement to remove this bias on, on yeah. gamification and games to bring creativity to its place. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I was told the other day, I was at this conference and someone told me that in uh, Lego uh, headquarters uh, in Denmark, in their offices, uh, all the offices, all the, so all the meeting offices, the, the center stage of the table is actually a, a bunch of Lego. So I think uh, employees and as, even executives are encouraged to, to keep playing, um, yeah. or at least this is just a folklore. I don't know. I was, I was. <laughs> no, told no, I it's not. It's not. And they, are, they have their but, own method. The Lego series yeah. play that right, a lot LEGO of people play. implement that. So, yes, we need to have elements that connect with who we are and and exactly what Chago told. Like we know the problem. Now, let's even use even our the speech. name, right? To your point, Renato, Lego series play. It, it puts the, the serious exactly. there, like, oh, exactly. man, this cannot yeah, yeah, be, yeah. like, super it's, funny play or super it's the bias. Yeah, but, There's well, a bias I can tell there. You, it's serious because it has a serious uh, objective, but it's not serious doing the, the, the Yeah. No, I, the I, process, I get that. I get know? that. Yeah. I get but, that. But that's it. But, but it's I the... think people, it's good to talk about that because when it, one thing is uh, what Renato was saying. You are in a meeting, you are joking, you are all, all having fun. And then someone says, okay, let's be serious now. And that's yeah. when you, you like take the children out of, of the room. And once you right. do that, you also take the creativity out of the room. So Absolutely. what you need to do is, okay, we don't need to talk serious. We need to, we need to understand that we have an objective to solve that problem. But we don't need to be serious about it now. We, we can be children. We can be creative. We can talk whatever we want. We have a safe environment. So give the ideas, and then we will think about the ideas later. There is a, diver a divergence and a convergence uh, 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 moment. So yeah. in the moment of the divergence, you, do you, you don't have to be serious. Absolutely. Using a little bit of design thinking as well. Um, yes. That's into the, the That's whole it. thing. All right. So before we wrap up, um, let's play a game, another game. I know we have been... <laughs> trying to do this but this is also something we we do with other guests um and of course this goes for Renato and Tiago uh you might have different uh strategies to dealing with each of this um so it's it's this or that game okay so let's start maybe with again Renato um morning meetings or evening calls Renato morning meetings what about you Tiago I prefer afternoon meetings and morning creative processes. <laughs> I don't. I, I, this is a kind of game that I don't like. I, I hate choosing. You know, I like to do mm. everything. But yeah, that's the but let's go. Games are also about making choices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah significant choices. Yes. <laughs> All right. So, digital tools or traditional methods, Tiago? Digital tools. Digital tools. But, you know, most of the board games I see uh, behind you, they are traditional board games, right? They, you are using dices yeah. and, you know, boards, pieces and stuff like that, right? You're not into video games or yeah. digital gamification necessarily. But, but that's why I say I, I, can't, I can't just choose one because uh, yeah. I, I love traditional games, but I also like video games. But when we're talking about a context uh, where you have to work remotely, you have a lot of... of uh, Uh, I would say, for me, a lot of creative process going on with different people uh, all over the world. For me, digital tools is, is the best way to do it. So, 
Okay, and so the digital tool gives you the on demand, like any yeah, board yeah. game that he has behind him, he will need 20 can minutes be. to set up and find friends at least. The digital I can do, I have 20 minutes, I, I'll use those 20 minutes playing a game as well. So, mm -hmm. if we need to choose, I'll choose digital. And I, I, I bet that you guys are also creating uh, digital games for Miro and, you know, not, or at least not for Miro. Not for yeah. Miro. I, I create a lot of, of digital games, but uh, for web based and, and tablets, and but not in Miro. Mm. I use well, Miro to create mm -hmm. the games to, to create to, to the creative process, but I don't use mm -hmm. it to create the game. So. Yeah, I, I guess. It, Lots of people are effectively using Mario to, to play games because you can emulate the experience of the, the board and oh, yeah, yeah, pieces yeah. and the whole thing. You right? could, yeah. You've um, done that. Yeah. You've done that. Okay, so working remotely or in the office, Renat? Remotely, but with a chance to take a coffee with the people. <laughs> Which... Which it could be remotely, but like uh, we need to have like also a remote, the remote, remote work. coffee. Yeah, we need to have the breaks where we socialize as well mm -hmm. and bring the kids back, please, <laughs> but remotely. Yeah, well, one of the things that I, I enjoyed the most when I, well, when I started working, like um, my, my, my first real job outside of the university was uh, actually, it was still inside the university. So this was back in 2002, 2003. And uh, I was working as an IT computer researcher for the university lab, and a bunch of my colleagues were also in there. And um, by, f well, by 4 or 5 o'clock, we would use, or 6 p.m. maybe, we would start playing this uh, LAN game. So back then, no one was really still, uh, you know, very few people were actually playing online on the internet. Most of online games were still l local area network uh, kind of games, right? So we would be playing um, Quake together and a bunch of other uh, games. And this was uh, such a powerful way to create bonds and, and social uh, socialize with, with colleagues. And this was almost a religion. Uh, I, was, I was not definitely not the heaviest gamer. Other people were. But, you know, from six to seven or eight, this was this was it. I mean, we would stop doing whatever we would be doing, and we would just using those computers to to play um, Quake Three for one or two hours. Nice. Um, and organizing LAN parties, you know, uh, that that's how old uh, we are. But anyways, um, let's maybe go to the final question here, which is books or video games. Tiago. <laughs> okay, I love books, but nowadays I'm I'm playing much more games uh, than than reading books. Uh, for me, when I play a game, I'm I'm having fun, but I'm also collecting a repertoire. You know, I, mm -hmm. I understand what game elements are there, and I can use that into into the work later. So, play games now. I have yeah. to say, video games. I'm oh, sorry. You were going to complain. No, no. Go on, go on, Hanat. I had to say video games just because I pay. 20 euros for a book and 20 euros for a game. A book I'll read in three days. The video game I'll play for 200 hours. So in the book I learn and, and I like learning there, but in the video game I practice and I learn different approaches. So yeah. the video game gets more range. Okay, so let's stay with the, with the games. Um could you share with us some games you would you recommend? Uh, and of course, this can be video games or this can be board games. And uh, if if it's a it's if if it's a video game, uh, tell us uh, which platform uh, and where to to look for for that for for that game. Starting with okay. I don't know, Tiago, Tiago maybe. Yeah. Okay, if if you like narrative and storytelling, I would say The Last of Us is one of the best games I've, I've played. Uh, Last of uh, Us, the board yes. game, or Last of Us, the video game? The the video game. Yes, it's a All really. Right. For which good which narrative. platform are you are you playing? I, uh, I played it into PS4, uh, but mm -hmm. you can, I think it's in all all the platforms now. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I also played all the all the games, uh, all the video game series, and I I, I watched the. Yeah. Uh, the TV series, which surprisingly yeah. it's super good. Yeah. It's really it's well. It's really done. good. 
It's really um, uh, faithful to the game. That's yes, absolutely. That I like. And even the, the choice of characters, especially yes. um, Joe was, Joe, was such a, yeah. good, a good pick. <laughs> a Very chilling nice. guy. You should, yeah. you know. <laughs> Lobby for a Brazilian guy, but no, a good actor for sure. <laughs> All right, so lo Last of Us, sorry, Last of Us. What what else? Any any other uh, recommendation? I can I can I can give a recommendation on the board games. Where I think this yeah. that of Winter that I said is really good. Uh, you have co cooperative and competitive games all together. So the the, so the name of the game is That of Winter. Oh, Dead of Winter. Okay. Yes, yes. It's, it's really, it's really a, nice. It's game. a game that you can find uh, online, or where can you find yeah, this, this game? Okay, I, I bought it in Brazil, but I think uh, you can find it in in, in other uh, Fnac or, or Warthog probably at Fnac. Yeah, yeah. You have you have uh, some uh, some expansion packs, and I have all of them because it's really really good. All right. Okay. And I'm, to the board I'm, I'm games. Watching here it's uh it's a game that you can play from 60 to you know 60 minutes to two hours uh two yeah. to five players okay great yeah Dead but of from the board game for me i need to add katan katan mm. for me katan. is the greatest here. game yeah please yeah. and you you have all the expansions i hope because we need to play with yeah. the so yeah well, one, 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 of, one of the things that sometimes prevent people from going deeper in, into this game is that People just don't have the the time to go through this heavy, um, you know, game uh, mechanics, right? And the rules, yeah, and yeah. sometimes it feels like you're you're just reading so many rules. Oh man, it's just so boring. I I, I can lose like I don't know yeah. one hour just to understand the game mechanics and start playing. So, what's your advice on? your professional advice in this case too. Let's say I want to play Catan with my kids. Um, I don't know the rules. They don't know the rules. What should we do here? Yeah, ideally, you should start with games that are quick to play. Like you you use that. We love it. Dixit is a great mm -hmm. example. Yeah, I love you Dixit, should, yeah. You should play this one as well. I'm going to lend this to Chago. That's why it's in my table. It's you can called find this Sm at Fenac. Smile, Simulo. 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 It's the same approach as, as Dixit, simpler, grant the same results for team building and creativity. But mm -hmm. yes, when you want to go to the more advanced games like Catan, mm -hmm. ideally bring an experienced player to the table at yeah. the first time. Mm -hmm. Because there are a lot of amazing games that are not played because your first experience, I don't know if we got it. Uh, and, and then you miss out on things that can teach you so much and give you so yeah. much fun fun time so always try to have a friend like Thiago that you can go to his house and have 100 <laughs> games and he will teach you the amazing things that you probably miss out only on reading but I'll yeah. tell you one thing don't 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 uh, wait for me to explain the rules I am really bad at that I'm really bad at that that every time that we have to explain a game it's my wife who does it because I, I I don't even read uh, the the rules and the manuals. I, I say okay okay you can read it you can learn it and let me know how it is because I'm not too uh, I'm, I'm too chaotic to do that. Hmm. So, okay. so you prefer so, other people tell you. Yeah. Or Amanda explains or I explain and then we play yeah, a game. Always it. try to find someone that have already played to introduce you to the game. Yeah, this way what, you once you I've used a couple of times and it actually worked pretty well. Uh, was uh, using ChatGPT to explain me how to play the game. Okay. Uh, yeah, and it, it worked. Uh, Never tried. That's yeah, try. actually, because, you know, ChatGPT knows all the games, right? So if you go there, hey, <laughs> yeah. I want to play Katan with my kids, and I don't know the rules. Can you tell me how to set up the game for a 60-minute ride? Blah, blah, blah. And, you know, um, yeah, ChatGPT. In this sense, Andrea, Katan, that's mm -hmm. such a very powerful game. Yeah, there is, is the yeah. digital version of Catan. Oh, really? It's free. It's called oh. Colonist. Colonist.io. It was like oh. a savior for me and my wife do, during COVID during pandemic. because we could we could be with our friends and play Catan, a game Together. that we really love. Uh, and you can play online for free. And with, with the addition of being an online game, 
it takes you it takes you by the hand and makes you get it and play and All right. so that's it a, works a great a great same. tip here colonist.io exactly if you want to go online and then yeah and then that's that's also a good tip because you can go from online to to board game if you have the board game later exactly. all right so for those that want to reach out for advice uh or maybe a game buddy i don't know if you're into that there should be like a game buddy uh platform or marketplace where you could hire someone for two hours just to play games with you just uh oh come come nice. over my home and i'll pay you i don't know 50 euros you just have to play katan with us explain us the rules and that's you know maybe there are physical stores for of the games. yeah there are physical yeah tinder of games that's for sure but there are physical <laughs> stores there's a uh, here in lisbon there's a bunch of those yeah. that you and there are, are, are you meet going up to groups? those stores uh, not, are you actually not, are you going to those stores here in Lisbon? Are you, because not, you're based not, in Lisbon, both of you. Yeah, not at the moment, but there are also meetup groups mm -hmm. to connect to play and games, play right. different board right. games and whatever. Okay. So w games are games are finding their spot on, mm -hmm. on new gamers, and that's great. Are, are you into any of those uh, meetup groups to play games? No, not at the moment, yeah. because I need to juggle. Uh, networking and games are a great way for networks, but mm. uh, not, when I say network, meeting people and, and right, find, right. give my, my base here. But and I have this small kid now, so limited time, but I'll get to that very, very soon. Very well. So let's say people want to reach out to, to you, Tiago and Hanato. Where can they find you? What is the best way to? You know, for a company to start gamifying their experiences or gamifying gamifying their learnings, what's the go-to strategy? Should they contact you, uh, uh, Kubo, or uh, and actually more than just asking for advice? Uh, just tell us a little bit what is the the process that you use to engage with with companies that want to go through this uh, gamification experience. So for me, okay. I have a YouTube channel that talks mm -hmm. about gamification and relationship strategies. It's at Tinkering Loyalty on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I have over 70 videos talking about gamification for companies in their relationship strategies, for doing loyalty programs, incentive programs, mm -hmm. and also to reach me directly on LinkedIn. I also post those contents with more insights on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm, my, I'm Renato Carbs at LinkedIn. All right. And... Um... And, and, and the trigger for lots of these companies at the end of the day, of course, people want to do gamification. That's all nice. Users are more engaged, but you know, I want to make more money, right? So of course, that's the, that's the end. That's the end state. You're increasing the bottom line by making gamification with more gamification, effective. increasing user retention, increasing mm -hmm. employee uh, motivation and, and performance mm -hmm. and sales team performance. So that's my main area of expertise. Right. Tiago, uh, what about Kubo? How to, to reach out? Yeah, we have uh, an Instagram and a LinkedIn as well. So basically it's Kubo with double O. So C-U-B-O-O -O experience uh, in, in LinkedIn. And for us, what we are most doing today is uh, trainings and team buildings and hiring processes with games. So uh, basically we do create gamified experiences as well and, and gamified courses and trainings. Uh, but our biggest customers nowadays are HR people, people from uh, training and development and talent acquisition that needs uh, to use games to retain talent and to train people. So uh, you can find me there. Uh, it's Thiago Barrio Nuevo. It's not so easy to spell. So Kubo experience, I think it's better. It's easier. Mm -hmm. So what, what are you doing exactly? What does uh, an HR gamified experience looks like for a uh, you know f for a hiring process uh, f for both the the user in this case the candidate? Why is this something uh, HR people are are doing at the moment? Okay, basically, I, I can tell you one example. We have done, mm -hmm. we have created a, a escape room, an escape game for uh, right. for Bosch, for instance. And basically, what we did is uh, we understood the employer value proposition. So they had an employee value proposition. They wanted the participants to understand why we're playing the game, but also while they were playing the game, the HR and the managers they were uh, watching 
in uh, assessing soft skills like communication, leadership, and, and, and so on. So we designed uh, a specific and exclusive game to that purpose. And during two days, we were in a hotel. People were playing the game while, uh, okay, so while they learned about the employee, employee value proposition, they were also being assessed on uh, the soft skills. So it's mostly this, assess assessment. For, for hiring process, yes, it's for assessment. Basically, people are looking at how you are communicating and, and uh, mm -hmm. working as a team and, and so on. Um, people are who they are while they're playing a game. They are not yeah. characters. They are, yeah, they, it's in hard five to, minutes, to, they to forget. Fake. Yeah. yeah, so that that's why it's good. But uh, yeah. this is only one process. The, 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 I think yeah, what we mostly do is trainings and team buildings, and then it's not assessing, but it's uh, we have uh, uh, we play the game, and later we and after the game we run a debriefing session, which can take thirty minutes, can take one hour, where mm -hmm. we can see what happened in the game that is connected to what happens in the daily routine of, of their teams. And then mm -hmm. they understand where they have to be better, where they have to work and, and, and get an action plan uh, so that they can be better teams uh, uh, after after that experience. That's it. Yeah, I think um, there's this quote from Plato, the philosopher that said, if you really want to know a person, you have to play games with that person. It's the only way <laughs> yes. to, it's the most effective way to really know. Yes. Uh, the person, right? If, because people cannot really fake who they are when they're playing. A That's game. true. That's it. Uh, after some time, especially you know, um, if if you go to this uh, psychological profiles that you were talking about, if they're more competitive, more social, yeah. or more kind of conquering kind of person. Um, well, this was a really insightful conversation for me. Uh, I think I, I learned a lot about what you guys are, are doing and some of the methods and strategies that you're employing. Uh, we're going to have, of course, a full-fledged workshop at Productize, which I'm personally super excited um, and looking forward to meet you in person. Uh, well, very soon, I think we'll probably meet before the conference, but uh, otherwise at Productize conference in October. Very nice. Thank you very much for the invitation. We're really happy to be here and to be there in Prototypes. It's going to be a fun session and also really, really good insights, I hope. Absolutely. Have a great one.